Hey, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training. Welcome back to another video. And today we're talking about how to throw harder without lifting weights. Now there are certainly some things that you can do to throw harder without lifting weights. That's what we're gonna discuss in today's video. But before we get into that, I wanna make the point that should you just focus on things that you can do without lifting weights? No, I'm a big believer in you should be lifting weights or you should be working out. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the weight room, especially for you younger players, but you should be doing some body weight exercises. You should do either the body weight stuff or the weight room stuff. It's gonna help you out. It's gonna directly translate to more success on the field. You're gonna be able to run harder. You're gonna be able to throw harder, right? You're gonna be able to swing a baseball bat quicker, resulting in more bat speed and more power, right? And so everything that we do on the baseball field can be magnified by our training off of the field. So with that said, I, I think that, you know, you should definitely focus on lifting weights. That's a great way to improve your velocity as well as your explosiveness. It's gonna help you in other areas of the game. So that's the first thing that I wanted to mention before we show you some ways that you can improve without lifting weights. I wanted to just make that statement that you should be lifting weights. Really, there's no excuse. So what should you be doing? Well, I'm not gonna, you know, drag on too long in this video because there's other videos out there that talk about that in more detail, right? But two things that I believe, well, three things I believe that you should be doing, right? Number one is compound movements. Compound movements are movements that incorporate multiple muscle groups as opposed to just one, okay? So a bicep curl, what is that? That's an isolation exercise. You're isolating your bicep. So instead of doing that, you should do, to get the most bang for your buck, you should do movements that incorporate more than one muscle group. So how about a squat, for example, that would incorporate, let's see, you know, your hamstrings and your quads and your glutes and your calves and your core, all in that one exercise. So if you wanna maximize your time in the gym, compound movements. Another great thing to do is explosive movements, okay? Because everything we do on the baseball field is explosive. When you're stealing a base, explosive. When you're pitching, explosive. When you're throwing, explosive hitting you get the name of the game, right? Everything that we do on the field is explosive, so let's do that in practice. Plyometrics are great for that. And the last thing I would really, really recommend that will make a huge impact in your bat speed, your throwing velocity, is start training with med balls, okay? You can do a lot with med balls in very little space. I'm a big believer in a lot of things we do on the field are rotational, right? Throwing, there's a rotational component. Hitting, there's a rotational component. So we can overload our system with medicine balls in practice. Uh, to get that same feeling, okay? So bottom line, you should be lifting weights, but there's definitely some things that you can do before you even touch a weight to improve your velocity. That's what this video is about. Let's get into it. So what's the first thing you can do without touching a weight to improve your velocity? That is develop sound mechanics. Whether you're a pitcher and you're working on your pitching mechanics or you're an infielder, outfielder, catcher, you're working on just your general throwing mechanics, working on improving your mechanics and throwing in the most efficient way possible, that's really gonna help you maximize the miles per hour that's already inside of you in the first place. I love to look at it as like you're unlocking mile per hour. You're not adding. A lot of players are so quick to get on, you know, they want to improve their bat speed. So they get on a bat speed program, right? And they start, you know, going heavy with bat speed training exercises when in reality, they need to fix their swing mechanics first because they're not even swinging the bat in an efficient way. If they do that, boom, overnight, they can improve their bat speed, you know, five, 10 miles an hour. It's the same thing with throwing, right? If you do something wrong, then it doesn't matter how, how many band exercises you do, how many weights you lift, how much you play long toss, until you get that particular issue solved in your mechanics, you're really not gonna reach your full potential. So I love to look at throwing mechanics. It's almost like a foundation on a house, right? If you were building a house, for example, wouldn't you want it to have a really, really solid foundation before you worry about all the cool appliances that you can add or whatever? It doesn't matter how great the appliances are, how big the flat screen TV is. If your house doesn't have a solid foundation, I would be a little bit concerned. It's the exact same when it comes to your throwing mechanics. Another great example would be, let's say you just got hired as the head strength and conditioning coach for your favorite big league team, and you've got a player who his mechanics on that squat exercise we talked about earlier, his mechanics on the squat are just awful, right? Well, what's the number one thing that you would do? Would you just start piling on weight and, well, eventually he'll get stronger one day? No, what would you do? You'd correct his form first, his squat mechanics, same thing with throwing. Another great thing you can do, plyometrics, okay? Why are plyometrics so great? Well, I love plyometrics 
because a lot of times, you know, they're explosive movements. Typically they're with your body weight, right? So that's great because you don't need access to a weight room or anything like that. But why I love them is because they help you really get the most out of your body. So an example of a plyometric exercise would be a split squat jump for an example, right? And so if you're doing a split squat jump, your goal is what? Your, your goal is to jump as high as you possibly can. What are you trying to do? You're trying to see how high you can jump. You're trying to maximize what's in your body. And so on the baseball field, it's the exact same thing. We're trying at the plate, you know, obviously you're not really thinking about it in the game, but you're trying to maximize your bat speed. That's the goal, right? On the mound, your goal is to maximize your fastball. And it's the same as a shortstop thrown over to first base. You want to throw that ball hard, right? And so plyometrics, they're super baseball specific, which is awesome. Some exercises in the gym, you know, laying on a bench press, for an example, is that something that directly relates uh, to a movement that you would do in you know, a baseball game? No, not necessarily. And not to say bench press is just, you, you shouldn't do it at all. That's not what I'm talking about, but it's not necessarily super specific or as specific as plyometrics. So plyometrics are great. So many different things you can do. Vertical jump, broad jump, skaters, split squat jumps. You can even combine some things. You can do like a broad jump and then go into some skaters all in one motion. Broad jump, skaters, right? The one thing I will say about plyometrics is try to only do these a couple times a week because they are hard on your joints because you're jumping and bouncing around all over. Uh, but they're a great way that you can start throwing harder, getting the most out of your body, and it requires very, very little space and no weights. The next thing that you can and should do is medicine balls. We already touched on this earlier in the video, so I'm just gonna breeze right through it, but medicine balls should become your new best friend because they're so baseball specific. They help you develop that rotational explosive power. So grab yourself a medicine ball. Another great thing about it is you can get so many reps in in such a short amount of time with very limited space. So a medicine ball should be a must, an absolute must. So many different exercises you can do. Um, you can do medicine ball slams where you bring the medicine ball over your head and you slam it as hard as you can down towards the ground. You can do slams. You can do a rotational slam where you're bringing it over your head and you're rotating for a right-handed thrower. You would rotate to your left. You wanna rotate the other way too. Bring it above your head and slam it down this way. Rotational slams. You can do rotational throws where you hold it out in front like this. My goal is to try to throw it as far as I can that direction. So I'd wind back like this and I would throw it. What does that look like? That looks like a baseball swing or a throwing motion, right? And so medicine balls should be your best friend. Super baseball specific. So many great things that you can do with them. And the last thing I'll mention in today's video, the last way you can improve not only your arm strength, but just your overall arm health is by doing rotator cuff exercise, okay? Rotator cuff exercises are great because what do they do? They help strengthen and maintain the health of your rotator cuff. Your rotator cuff is so important in throwing sports because as you throw, your rotator cuff is what actually slows down your arm. It's what keeps your arm attached to your body, right? Your rotator cuff is what slows down what you accelerated when, you, when you're throwing, right? And so your, your arm really is only going to, your, your brain, your body is really, really smart, right? Your arm is only gonna speed up, it's only gonna travel, accelerate, as fast as it's capable of decelerating, okay? And so it's very, very important if your rotator cuff is what slows down your arm, keeps your arm healthy, it's important to train that. There's lots of ways that you can do it, but it's great because you can do these uh, pretty much on a daily basis or at least several times a week. Um, really, I'm telling you, it's gonna transform not only your velocity, but also just your arm strength, your overall arm health. You're not gonna have those days when your arm just feels like it's hanging when you get into a really good rotator cuff exercise routine. So lots of things you can do. I would strongly recommend getting yourself picking up some bands because they're great. You can attach them to a fence. You can even do them at home. So many different exercises you can do with bands. Um, you can do light dumbbells as well. You can also, I mean, be creative. Find something light around the house. Find soup cans or something else in the pantry that you can do rotator cuff exercises with. There's really no excuse and there's not much else that you can do better for your arm than take care of your rotator cuff. So that's it, really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit that thumbs up button for me, I'd really appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're coming out with brand new baseball videos every single week, and I don't want you to miss any of them.